What's up guys, I'm Andy. Here we have a Honda HRV and the windshield washer sprayers are not spraying on the windshield. There's something going on with it. We gotta check it out. Here in New England, it's winter time and we need these to work. You're not gonna be able to see on the windshield. So let's get inside and see what's going on. So let's turn the key on. I don't have to start the engine. Just give it a second. And then I'll give it a try. So I can hear it, which is a good sign. It's just not spraying. And then I'm gonna just try the back while we're here. So the back, I can hear the motor or the pump. It's pumping and it's actually working. All right, so let's shut this down. Let's get out of the car. The fact that we can hear the pump pumping, although it does not sound very healthy, we know that everything from the switch to the pump is good. So electrically, we're all set. So there's something blocking or the pump being bad, something from the pump to the washer nozzles themselves. Now there could be some type of ice or something plugged up in the washer nozzles. So you can always take a look at those. You can see the nozzles right there underneath the hood. And sometimes those plug up or it, they could get ice and snow clogging them and that's gonna cause them not to work properly. Um, it doesn't look like we have any ice or snow in these. So let's open the hood. And take a look at the washer reservoir. It's right here. You wanna make sure you uh, fill this up with washer fluid. The washer fluid could just be low, or if the mixture isn't correct for winter time, it could even freeze, and that could cause this situation. Although the rear pump working, that's probably not the case. So that's a, another good indication why you should check the rear pump. So that's full now. But it's full, I'm just gonna test it again, just to confirm. Turn the key on and hit the switch. And still nothing. So here's something. <laughs> With the uh, key on and spraying that, we see fluid coming out right here. So that's an indication we might have a hose that's popping off. Um, so let's raise the vehicle up and uh, take a look. <laughs> definitely looking from there. So let's take the tire off and the inner fender well and see what's going on. All right, take the wheel off. fender well, there's some push pins and some screws. So we'll just have to take those off. Use some trim tools. Oops, sometimes they break. It's <laughs> dripping pretty good. And I probably don't have to take the entire fender in your fender well out. I just gotta move it over a little bit. Just like that. Oh, there's there's a leak. The hose is ripped. Alright, how did that just cut? I'm just going to try to plug this up with a some type of plug. I just happen to have a screw just to slow this down. Or I could pinch off the hose. That would work, too. All right. We stopped the bleeding, so that's good. So where's the rest of the hose? 
So I drop the vehicle down again and I'm looking at the hoses. This is one of the hoses that goes to the rear, but the other hose should come up here and there's nothing there. And then it's clipped in right here and it's just cut right there. Now that's cut. So I don't know whether this car was in an accident and someone just didn't splice this back together. I mean, this part was not attached. There should be a push pin holding that on. Um, so, I mean, there's some conduit right here that has some wires rubbed out. I thought that might have been a rodent, but maybe, maybe this car was in an accident and they just never put it back together, right? So we're just gonna have to get some hose and connect these two together and see what happens. All right, I got some hose and I got some vacuum connectors. This is how you would fix it. If you just had a break right here, you could just cut both ends and slide this in. But just trim it so it's flat, that's good. And slide this end in. There's not a lot of pressure behind this, so it's not gonna make a huge difference. Slide the hose on. It looks like that. The hose is a little thicker, but the inside is still the same, so that's fine. We'll run that down below. And connect it up. I'll go back up in the air. And same with this end. I'll just slice it so it's straight. Just slide that on. See if I can reach the other one. Turn the key on. I don't want to get sprayed. Yeah, I'll get it in the car real quick. There it goes. It's working now. So that's good. I'm just gonna check the rear again. And you can see the motor actually sounds the same for the rear and the front. Now it's working properly. And it's probably not spraying all the way on the windshield because the, ho the uh, hood's not closed all the way. Let me try that. Just close the hood all the way. And it's about the same. It's a little bit low, but it'll work. It'll do the job. So let's talk about this pump a little bit. This is uh, pretty interesting. So there's actually two lines that come off this pump. And I, I don't want to take it out because uh, then all the wash fluid's going to come out. But it looks like if the pump pumps in one direction, this goes to the rear. And if it pumps in the other direction, it goes to the front. So if you disconnect this connector, there's two wires going to it. So let's, uh, let's just test these out, let's see what's going on here. So I have my friend Steve up in the car helping me out and I'm gonna take a test light. I'm gonna put one end on the ground somewhere on the engine. I'm gonna test how this works. So light shouldn't light right now. You just wanna lightly touch it. You never wanna shove the test light into the terminal. You can damage the terminal. All right, go ahead and try the front washer. So we get power out of the red wire and nothing out of the pink. Now try the rear one. So for the rear washer, it puts power to the pink wire and I'm assuming it grounds the red wire because we know the pump's working. So that's pretty interesting. So when you are using the washer, whether it's the front, you're gonna have power out the red, pink is your ground and vice versa for the rear. Um, it's just a different type of pump, but it works and it works now. And this is what you would wanna check if you didn't have any pump working. You'd wanna check for power and ground here when someone's um, activating the switch. That's good. And then if you did have the power and ground at the connector and nothing was working, then you're gonna need a pump. And to replace it, it's pretty easy. You want to drain, make sure you have something to collect all the washer fluid 
take the two lines off, take the pump out, get the new pump, make sure you get the grommet that's gonna work with the reservoir, and make sure it seals properly, and then put the pump in, reconnect it, and you'll be good to go. On most vehicles, you're gonna have two different pumps. You're gonna have one pump on one side of the washer reservoir, and then sometimes a little bit higher up, you're gonna have a different pump. So in that case, you may have it where the rear's not working or the front's not working. Um, I would assume on most vehicles, the rear is gonna be higher. So if there's still a little more washer fluid, that it works for the front window instead of the rear. Um, in some of those vehicles, you could actually switch the pumps. Sometimes they're the same part numbers or you could at least switch the hoses and see if you can um, get the washer fluid to come out for the front versus the rear and vice versa. Some other things you wanna check out is the hose, obviously the hose where we saw where it was cut, but up here and then under here and see if it's leaking out of any of these areas or even plugged up. They could be frozen. You might have to heat them up somehow. You might have to get creative. And then where the no wash on the washer nozzles are, right there, right there. See if any of the uh, washer fluid is pouring out onto here, then you know you can find an area that needs to be repaired. All right, let's talk about washer fluid. Now we have three different colors here. The colors are gonna indicate the different uses for those wash fluids. They're all gonna clear your windshield when you need it, or just some are gonna do a better job than others. Let's start with the blue. Now it's typically the standard that we've all used and it works okay, it gets the job done. Moving on to the green. This is normally a bug juice type washer fluid and it's gonna work well in hotter climates. When your windshield is covered in bugs, this is gonna help remove the bug guts from the windshield so you can see again. The huge disadvantage of the green or the bug juice is in the wintertime or colder climates, you could have it freeze up, it could freeze up the nozzles and it's not gonna work. In that case, you're gonna want to go with the two-in-one which has the bug juice and the winter blend. With the winter blend, you're gonna wanna make sure it protects up to a certain negative temperature. This happens to be negative of 25 degrees that is more than adequate in our area and if you're in even colder areas they make a winter formula that will not be prone to freezing so choose your washer fluid based on your needs so we fixed the Honda now we have this Dodge caliper that's having the same problem but it's having a problem in the rear so we're pretty much gonna diagnose it very similar to what we did on the Honda so let's see what's going on with the key on let's give this a try and I can hear the pump, which is good, but I hear water rushing into the back seat. Oh, now it's out of fluid. So let's see what's going on. The washer sh nozzle is right here. Should come out there, but it's obviously not. And you can see where the hose is. Goes right down here. And I don't see any washer fluid over in this area but I do see a lot of washer fluid coming out of where the seatbelt goes. So something must be popped off in here. So we gotta take this apart. There's gonna be a lot of water underneath here. So either way, it looks like I have to take this part off. So start taking this out. Oh yeah, there's a lot of water in there, or washer fluid. Just pops right off. There we go. And there's a hose right here, and there's a junction right there. Looks like it just popped off the junction. That's kind of weird. Maybe there was, maybe the nozzle froze and that caused too much pressure here and it popped it off. It's unlikely, but it could happen. I don't see any slices in the rubber. So let's just connect these two.
All right, let's close it, try it out. All right, don't forget, I have to add some washer fluid because I used it all up. Make sure you don't add it to the coolant. Um, this is the washer fluid symbol. A lot of people do that. I mean, it looks close enough to the washer fluid. Someone might put washer fluid in there and vice versa. Sometimes people could put coolant in the washer fluid, which is really not good because your windshield's gonna smear and you're not gonna be able to see anything. And success, look at that. Perfect. So that's all set, it's good to go. We just need to clean up some of the washer fluid inside there, put the panels back together and we'll be all set. So what probably happened was there was probably some ice damage, something was clogging up the washer nozzle and that caused that to pop off. That's my assumption anyway. If you have another idea, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you out, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos.